Leon's correspondent Bruce Harrison is joining us from New Delhi for a change. Bruce, hi, good evening. Thanks for joining us here on Weon. Um, tell me, how exactly does this sort of imperil chances of breaking the deadlock between the U.S. and the North? Well, Aisha, we're still waiting to, to get a, a formal response from the United States on this latest test. If we look back to the past weekend on Saturday, May 4th, when North Korea uh, tested what's believed to be a short-range missile as well, President Trump took very measured steps in responding to that missile launch, said he still believed that, quote, Kim was with him in this process, in these negotiations, and that he ultimately believed a deal is possible. Now, uh, less than a week later, today we have what we also believe to be the, the launch of two short-range missiles from uh, the western, uh, western province in North Korea. It's unclear exactly um, how that could impact. It's certainly going to put more pressure on the U.S. president. Um, it was in 2017 when he was engaging in a war of words with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un um, during a series of nuclear tests and missile tests. Um, similar ballistic missiles from the distances we saw today, we believe, uh, that President Trump was very harsh in his rhetoric, and at one point he sent uh, a number of warships toward the Korean Peninsula, made other uh, threats, military threats towards North Korea, verbally as well as physically, movements of uh, different bombers and uh, uh, um, Air Force as well. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how the president responds. He believes that he's come quite far in negotiations with North Korea. Um, obviously, Kim has stepped up the pressure. It's, it's really going to come down to how President Trump responds. And if he still believes there is room to talk at this point after such uh, a quick test following the first last weekend. Right. And how do we uh, see or perceive South Korea's position in all of this? Well, President Moon Jae-in uh, is just wrapping up a, a speech uh, in South Korea today, a, a, a live uh, speech with uh, a local broadcaster, KBS. Um, it's his first of the year, and it had nothing to do with uh, the missile test in North Korea. So it was uh, perhaps a plan from North Korea to put President Moon on the spot, seeing his, he was already going to be under lights on live television, um, force his hand in answering uh, to what this latest missile test. Uh, some of the things Moon said during that was that it was unclear if this would violate UN sanctions against North Korea. I think he said that because he was not quite 100% sure, didn't want to uh, confirm outright that this was a missile test. But it's, it does look that to be the case based on the distance these missiles were tracked. Uh, and it would certainly be in violation of UN sanctions. President Moon is in a very difficult position right now. He doesn't want to see North Korea taking these kind of steps. Uh, his government condemned the missile test last Saturday um, because of the, the damage it could do to the ongoing peace process. Um, he doesn't seem like he has very little room right now to maneuver. Um, North Korea seems to, to be in control in a sense of, of what could happen to the, this, this diplomatic process at this point. It seems firm in its resolve that it's not going to take any serious concessions with its nuclear program unless the U.S. agrees to ease international sanctions uh, or perhaps South Korea is uh, in the position where it feels it can um, perhaps uh, violate, not violate, but uh, uh, engage more with North Korea economically, any kind of cross-border decisions that would make North Korea feel more comfortable to continue talks and give up parts of its weapons program. Um, right now, it'll be, it'll be up to uh, President, I think people are waiting right now to see what President Trump will say after this. South Korea has already condemned the test. President Moon clearly unhappy and worried, very concerned, he said, about what comes next. Right. Last question, Bruce. Uh, this also comes at a time when the U.S. is engaged in a war of words and much more, really speaking, with Iran. Uh, there are trade talk difficulties going on between the U.S. and China. Do you think the timing of the North Korean launches uh, today and the fact that it's the second set of uh, weapons tests that have taken place in a matter of five days, is the timing of all of this extremely significant? Perhaps there could be uh, some... Um, movement that's less than a coincidence, Aisha. Um, President, uh, or rather, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un re recently held his first summit with uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin. He has met multiple times with the leader of China, uh, Xi Jinping. Uh, so maybe it would appear that Kim is feeling more confident that he has the support of these other powers, Russia, China, uh, that he feels he can, he can test these devices, he can put greater pressure on Washington and hopefully move the chains or, uh, in, in another expression, uh, force Washington into a position where it's actually willing to uh, give up the kind of concessions that Kim Jong-un wants 
wants to see. Uh, he may feel slightly emboldened because of, like I said, the summit with Putin and his continued relationship uh, with China at this time. So it is very possible that uh, this is strategic uh, within Kim's orbit, and he may be making these steps uh, solely because he feels he has more of the world on his side, or at least in this region, in regards to his weapons program and what he wants to see for the future of his regime within Pyongyang. Bruce Harrison in New Delhi, thanks very much for joining us.